Nate here from Nerdarchy, for Nerds by Nerds. Today I'm with my esteemed colleagues and we're going to be discussing um, the good, the bad, and the ugly of sci-fi genre. I'm Ted. Dave. Ryan. And so, coffee. <coughs> so sci-fi games, you know, it's not the, the, the foremost of uh, what we play, but we've done, we've done some things, uh, you know, here and there. What do you guys think? Well, okay, for us personally, we've kind of like... We've crossed the streams when it comes to sci-fi. We've mixed it with you D &D, never crossed streams, but we did. We did. We crossed. <laughs> we mixed it with D and D, and we've done <laughs> superheroes. We mixed it with superheroes with a cosmic game. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally, I played in Star Frontiers years and years ago. I think that's the the only one that was like straight up sci-fi. And then you guys um, with Paranoia. With that's Paranoia. a pretty sci-fi game yeah. too. I I, uh, I used to do uh, Star Wars as well with a whole other gaming group. Well, that, that, that's really, um, so it's weird, like, Star Wars is, like, fantasy with elements of a, of, of a science fiction. It's kind of a space opera. Star Trek is, like, hard science. Right. You know, like, sort of, like, to, to split the well, two Well, spots. they sell it as hard science, yeah. Star, yeah. Star, Star Wars and Star Trek are both space. It's just how they're delivered. You know, Star Wars talks about, oh, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Because, I mean, you still have... You know, lasers and starships and all that stuff that goes along with and droids. And but droids. Not the ones you're looking for. But you know, <laughs> you know, so that that all goes with the space theme. It's just you know, okay, well, we're gonna all toss in these laser swords, you know, lightsabers, if you will, um, you know, just to give it the long time ago. Concept. Well, and also they deal with an ancient religion, like the whole Jedi thing is uh -huh. kind of an old cult that few people believe in, you know, like depending on what era you're talking about uh -huh. in, in the universe, too. So the question is then, like, how does this translate into RPGs? Yeah, I mean, well, there's there has been a Star Trek RPG, there is Star Wars, there's the Minera. Yeah, there's um, the, the freaking Warhammer has like the Warhammer 40k universe, you can role play in that. Absolutely. So that's totally a thing. Oh, yeah, we missed one that we played it too. We've done Gamma World. Oh, yeah, okay. Gamma World is. Pretty... It's post apocalyptic, you know, a little yeah. bit of everything. You don't get much yeah. more sci fi than that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess that would count. So, yeah, so if, I would say for the, uh, I'm going to start off with the ugly of sci fi is. Over oh, no. over teching everything, when everything is like this, it takes you five or six giant words to explain what this device is. Or you know, I don't I don't like that. I mean, I, I like Star Trek, and they do tend to to tech their lingo up, but then they explain it with a really easy metaphor. I, I would <laughs> I would also say in regards to um, to running a sci fi game, when you've got the ability to get access to or use this you know, super powerful tech. You can teleport. You can easily fly from one circumvent to obstacles. So there's a lot of things that you can think. Oh, that's not a problem. I'm just going to do this. Yeah. You know. So same still, problems that a high magic game runs into, really. When you think about. Yeah. If you, yeah. A high, high level. High level. High level. High magic game can have that kind of situation. Well, you've got to put limits on the things. If it's just high magic in the future, then okay. Well, I teleport through wherever I want on this planet because I can. Yeah. But you know. When you run in from the, the, the sci fi aspect, you have the well, why can't I teleport into this cave? Weird the, ozone, special radiation. Yeah. The fuse is blown and you need to replace the part. Scotty's got to spend like 18 hours fixing it. You guys are kind of stuck here. So get in that shuttlecraft and get down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, I'm going to go with for a con is, is like actually, the, it's a con and it's a pro. One of the biggest problems with sci fi games is, is the versatility of them, it's, it's a huge genre. Possibly the, I would say possibly the biggest. You know, you, you know, it runs from everything from you know, uh, Gamma World or Thundar the Barbarian, which has a lot of elements that are kind of like swords and sorcery, but with magic. You know, I mean, with technology, to you know, to your Star Trek. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that gambit in between is huge. And then like you, you put in a little bit of like thriller or horror with like aliens if you draw the influence from something like that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, totally raving off it up. Utopian so societies. Uh, right, right. Dystopian like, societies. Oh, which, yeah, which, that's what I meant. The one, <laughs> one, yeah, right. The ones with the world. Remember that one that like the world like changed like overnight like every day? What was that? Oh, uh, D Dark D City? Or? Dark City, yeah. yeah. It was a great movie. Yeah, it was badass. But totally a great source of inspiration for that. Um, but another con too is like when you're players have access to like starships and they can go literally 
Like, if you lay out a plot, a problem for them, because that is Game Master, that's what you really do. You lay out a problem. That and you they decide to go home and they, instead. Yeah, they decide to go, <laughs> like, oh, there's a mining city that we can make all this money. I've got this plan. And, you know, like, so, like, when they can totally, like, disregard the adventure to go gallivanting. Va- the sandbox about, is really yeah, big. Yeah, yes. gallivanting about the galaxy. And, like, oh, and I heard this brothel in this plan. It's fantastic. Let me go so to that star station. You, you have the That's when you hit one Reavers. Yeah, right. I don't care what game you're playing. Just throw them Reavers. Just throw them so, so you have the ability that you know it forces the DM to, to improv if the players decide to go you know off, off track. I do I do think yeah it definitely leads to much more being comfortable with improvisation because there's so many chances and odds of what people are doing. Okay, so so you want you know you don't want to necessarily railroad them, but if you give them you know campaign things that are you know time intensive. It, it limits their well. Let's you know go off in here and go off and do there. Well, you, there's that, but like you know, okay, let's go back to you know great source material, Star Trek. How many times did it just kind of like float from one spot to the next, and bam, Q shows up, or right. you, you know, or something, or some great anomaly yeah. shows up, or or yeah. for some well, reason you a... got uh, what are those tribbles? <laughs> you know, over, hey, you've got trouble with them. Yeah, <laughs> overrunning your ship for no reason, like uh, you know, or you know, Romulan bird of prey drops. Out of cloaking and starts whooping ass on you. Yeah, no, so, but, so there are definitely ways to circumvent that. So, so, if, so what you're, you know, so that, what I'm saying is, if you know, or what you're saying is, if you have some side trackers already in place, you know, you could be like, okay, well, while you're trying to go there, this happens. You can either cho- you know choose to continue on or go off and yeah. You know, I, I think direction. that would be an easy. Like, you need to or just have shit on their ship break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit on their or an intergalactic uh, merchant guild is doing a blockade for but, some reason. Yeah, that could be like yeah, random. Get all on our, the same random encounter table that you prepared. Yeah, you know, or they, you know, they find someone in cryogenic sleep that's in a spaceship, or they find a wreck, or a strange satellite, or you know, there's a planet there that wasn't there before. That doesn't make sense. That's weird. Yeah, or all kinds of things. So if you have those things prepped ahead of time, as you know, roadblocks for your players when they want to go do something crazy. Uh, you've got at least something. That and you it might out there. create a buffer session for you to, right. you know, unless of course they change their mind because you put something out there that sparks something. Oh wait a minute, we got to haul this over to the space station yeah, exit, the board. intergalactic junkyard. Yeah. <laughs> so God damn it, do we even have an intergalactic junkyard? To, to, no, now we do. It's really close by the quest area. It has one. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, like to bring it back to something more positive, a pro. Like, really, it gives you permission to sort of venture into so many different, um, like, if you wanted to have a one-shot of something go on, like a Western, well, something went wonky on the holodeck, and now the entire ship is like an old-timey Western town, and you have to deal with the NPCs and stuff in this Western town, but you're still in your space game, and you'll eventually come out of it. Or, you know, you have a planet that is completely like that, and yeah. you, you've got to go make contact with them and do whatever mission, mission, mission. Or essentially, you're, um, you're in Fi- Firefly's universe, because that was pretty western Yeah, oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, with, with uh, you know, going on that vein, uh, sci-fi really offers up everything, and you can change, you know... Um, From worlds, planet to planet, yeah. you know, you can change worlds like that. It's like, okay, well, you know, over the course of two days, you travel from this planet to that planet, and now as opposed to dealing with, you know, this humanoid race that is very pro this and very, you know, calm that, you now have this this thing that is only vaguely humanoid, gigantic slime creatures, and now you have to, you know, contend with them. And it wants to eat your energy, <laughs> energy source, your energy. <laughs> you know, so you, you've got the ability to honestly put anything and everything out there, and you know. With, with science or magic, it's possible. So just put it out there. Yeah. And, and you can go so many different ways with just like writing material. Like if you want it to be funny, you like have it influenced by like Hooker's Guide to the Galaxy or like Spaceballs, you know, or if it's grim and gritty future, you know, you can look at like dark dystopian sort of movies and dramas and things like that. Sort of. Then, like, if you really want to go in a totally different direction, you do have things like Transformers or GoBots. There you go. Yep. I'm yeah, play a guy that turns into flight suits and all kinds of crazy stuff. A guy that turns into an A track player. Like what? What? <laughs> what? How? How Don't you possible? have like futuristic technology? Not even downloadable the, crystal things. Not in the even an, not even the iPod. Seriously, <laughs> an A track. What is wrong with you? Yeah. No, they were tape decks, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, actually, it made sense because they mimic things in that world. Yeah, yeah, You're right. For the most part, except for when they didn't. Right. Dave, exactly. making sense of them. Yeah. 
come on, man, it's science. It's, you know, this is not science. your this is not your crazy magic. Yeah. But yeah, so it's, like it's science that you know just ignores physics because I can when I transform I can change size. Ah, you know. Or have my trailer just completely disappear. It just goes away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even, Unless I need it. <laughs> even in the, the sub He's got a little dimension pocket. Even in superheroes, like, there's, you know, the techie heroes are totally in the sort of sci-fi vein, like Iron Man. Um, I think a lot of Ant-Man's powers are, are derived supposedly scientifically. So, like, the, the humans that have access to devices that make them, you know, superheroes. Are essentially sci fi characters too. Yeah, technology background kind of heroes or. Oh, and that's the other thing. Like a sci fi game can actually fall in any kind of time period too. Mm -hmm. So, like, they, that's what I mean. Like, it's so wide open when you play sci fi. You know, you, so, you know, I guess like the first thing you got to do is you just have to determine what, you know, what the parameters are mm -hmm. as the game master. I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of systems out there that you can. Run in. There's, you know, there's Paranoia. There's Star Wars. There, Star Frontiers. I'm sure you can find an old copy of that. Or Dread. The, the, oh, the yeah, Jenga Dread. Tower thing. You know, like yeah. Which I, oh, I was. I was so you said like Dread. You. I was thinking Judge Dread. Well, Judge Dread. But there's there's the rule set that basically do any type of game you want with a Jenga Tower, and that just seems like an awful lot of fun. I still want to do one of those games. Yeah. Okay. And let's not, you know, forget about Boots Mastermind. Yeah. Can literally yeah. be done with any any setting any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's other generic ones too, like Rifts or GURPS. And GURPS. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You guys play GURPS? I have no idea. I have not I've played GURPS. No. Yeah. I'm GURPS. I'm GURPS curious. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and fate, fate is. Yeah. Oh, fate. Well, I mean, and, and my character for uh, for Scott's one shot uh, thing that maybe we'll give it back to at some point. Oh, so much gaming, so little time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Doctor Science, aka uh, Peter Venkman. Um, so yeah, he's based off Bill Nye with Bill Murray's character from Ghostbusters name. Um, but yeah, his whole thing is about making like, you know, gadgets and devices. He's a gadgeteer. A boom. So yeah, making explosives and things like that. So, you know, definitely more in the realm of plausible science-ish. So, so along with comedic. Do I, you know, comedic, what, yeah. I, th I think we covered most of the stuff you guys can contribute at home or wherever you're watching this video from. Wait, what about Mac Armor and Max? There like, we yeah, go. yeah, like back of warriors, like because you have the different level of like. Ah, that's just transformers without with somebody inside them. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just saying, like, so there's and the, lots of the, guns. the same and explosive. Well, <laughs> particle cannons, baby. I, I guess getting into another <laughs> con. Uh, con. <laughs> well, uh, Cthulhu Tech oh, is yeah. something I wanted to check out. I watched that a while back. A really awesome review on it. I think I even shared it on the Facebook page. But uh, like, th there is all these different factions and. Uh, and it wasn't just like Cthulhu, but they actually like found the portal portal to Cthulhu world, and they were using it for like a power source, which can never be good. <laughs> no, no, you did not want to be battery powered by Cthulhu. But one of the cons I just uh, thought to get into, you run into the same um, problem of power scaling that superheroes has. The single lone scientist or soldier. And there's Max and starships and stuff like that. Like you know, if everybody, if like a bunch of people are pirating, piloting Max. That sounds like a Rifts problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, or BattleTech, or because they made BattleTech into a uh, an RPG too. You don't want to be the the lone pilot guy running around in a sea of Max, or like having one Mac guy in the Mac that like dominates everything. Everybody else is on the ground. Like that's, well, that's so. It's the star. It comes back to the Star Wars argument. Either all Jedi or no Jedi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, that's Unless you're Spoony. Quoting Spoony. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that, that's why you've got the situation, or not even situation, you know, that's where the actual rules, you know, issues come, come into question. You know, that's why I lean towards mutants, mutants and masterminds, because there, that's just character build. You know, you, you, know, you choose, like, all right, well, you know, I, you, you're firing a particle cannon, and I, I've got this pistol. Well, if I'm just that good with a pistol, you know. Even if you are, you're no match for the particle cannon. <laughs> so, well, I mean, it, it's down to... You know, well, how yeah, the rules are, are there. To, like, okay, so you're not, you're the pilot, you don't really have superpowers, but you have a mech. Right. Your mech can do blast, and your mech can do launch missiles, which is like a, a fireball, basically. It, right. it kind of creates, well, in those games, it's a little bit easier than the supers game, I feel, because it kind of creates this dynamic where you're going, okay, I got the pilot of the spaceship, He's so I have to present challenges specific to that. Right. I got the mech guy, so, well, we need to throw another bad guy mech or... Or, or a guy, uh, uh, what do they call Kaiju, it? Kaiju, Kaiju in there or something. 
you know, to, to kind of like balance out. In the meantime, you got your, your foot soldier types guys with things that they have to, maybe they have to go in building the building or something. But it does create this weird thing where you have to like do all these separate encounters in the same encounter. Yeah, well basically, I mean, the mech guy is going to get swarmed if not, you know, if not individually by fighting like a big, big nasty. A bunch of guys are like, that's the obvious threat. I'm gonna go for that, and then the other guys get to like stealth around and sneak. Yeah, sneak place your, you want to get up behind them and place some explosives on them. And you know, it's, it's just you know, it's pl planning your encounter for your party. Right. Yeah, you know, it's what you have to do. But I mean, the, the best way to start to navigate that is probably just EMP, yeah, electromagnetic pulse. Well, that would work. Just or you know, defining the game you're gonna play with your mm -hmm. players beforehand. To make sure that everyone is kind of like, yeah, we're all mechs or we're yeah, all we're mech, mech warriors. Yeah, or, or yeah. no one's a mech warrior, yeah. you know. Or if you got a pilot character, well, maybe everyone's on a spaceship. That would probably make more sense, like a Firefly right. or a, or well, a Star Trek. Well, I mean, Trek. most times, no one is going to, like, the pilot guy is going to excel at being a pilot, and that's not going to come into play that much. The pilot should be an NPC, really. Like, I mean, unless somebody really was okay with the idea of sucking in most instances well, when he wasn't piloting. You're, so you're a pilot, I mean, you have to like, you're, you're operating a vehicle in fifth. That's really easy. That's that's only going to be a, a portion of what your character. That is. can be done in your background, and you like already have the ability. Or you know, or you know, you got encounters where you're doing ship to ship combat, yeah, and right. that guy becomes the star. Right, right. I mean, yeah, if you build it in, you could do that as well. Yeah, but it's not like it's not like you have a tremendous amount of skills, game in game terms, that are directed just at piloting that ship. So I mean, you can still be really good at shooting. Yeah, yeah. It, it would it would depend. Like you know. In, in that dynamic where you're talking about, like, a, gr a group crewing a ship, you know, they'd all have their primary function on the ship probably and, then, dish, have, yeah. and then have secondary ones. And depending on the system you're using, maybe it doesn't really require that much of the, the character built to do that thing. Character resources. Yeah, so if you're looking at, at, you know, an example of Firefly, <laughs> you know, you, you've got the, the captain who also can shoot a gun. You've got the, the hired hand who can also shoot a gun. You've got the friend that can also shoot a gun. You've got the mechanic who doesn't want to shoot a gun. The doctor who, you know, doesn't like to shoot a gun but can. You know, and so you, you got know, Wash who can't. He can just pilot and, for the most part. And then you've got the pilot who pretty much stands, you know, stands behind you know somebody else. But I mean, there's nothing to say that if you built this crew that they all have the specialty and can engage in combat to some level to some capacity. capacity. Well, I mean, it's a, yeah, it should be a bit of a... And, and it depends, too. Like, you know, what, what is the purpose of that crew? Are they mercenaries? That they're in conflict with that. Well, then you're probably you're you're then you're you're, fighting they're all pro they're they're probably all badasses. Maybe the pilot isn't the, the, the least badass, badass of the badass. Uh, but you you know he probably is better than Joe Schmo average or maybe even your average soldier. I just got or out of pilot school. <laughs> or <laughs> even like you know something happened where like his one of his legs was blown off, so he has a hard time getting around. So yeah, he used to be a badass fighter, but the whole because there's the there's, there's a difference between you know an in interesting dynamic of a of a TV show versus what is going to be compelling towards the players at your table. Um, you know, so I, I would imagine, especially with a, a system like Mutants and Masterminds, you're only going to require so many points to get put into skills to, to do your specialty, be it, you know, doctor, engineer, pilot. You know, and the rest can just get put into whatever else. I mean, oh, I want to di diversify my skills, so I'm not going to be as good at, at combat, but I still can do it. Um, and, you know, so again, that comes back to the parameters set to your players of well, what what is the game dynamics? What is, what is the quests going to be like? Are you mercenaries? Are you um, smugglers? You know, are you smugglers? Are are you diplomats? You know, are you out? You know, is it going to be primarily a role playing you know ship? You know, are, are you playing? The so many diplomacy quest. You know, are, <laughs> well, speaking to that, right? Um, I played Star Frontiers years and years ago. And I did play, I played the mechanic slash pilot. Except for the race that I was playing are the, were these like, uh, they were ape like, they were basically like flying apes. They had like the, uh, the like the flying, the flying squirrel uh, folds where they could glide, uh -huh. right? But because of the way the race was, they're also like naturally berserkers <laughs> as well. So, but I made them the mechanic or the pilot. So, so in hand to hand combat, in melee combat, he was still a badass because he could freak out. And basically go apeshit. 
Oh, <laughs> literally. Although, I would, I, would, uh, I would make it as the GM of that, like, if he, like, scrapes his knuckle while working on something, <laughs> and something, he just breaks down break shit. I mean, because you have to, like, counterbalance that, like, oh, yeah, he can do all these things fairly well. Fairly well. well, how do I kind of screw with this character a little bit, because he's a little too good? I know, he just, like, sets himself back by a week by, like, going apeshit on the Well, there is also a lot of other cool races you can play at Star yeah. Frontiers as well, yeah. so yes. it does balance out. And back in the, you know, that was the end there. In the 80s. Dude, do you remember um, uh, Captain Bucky O'Hare? Oh, I do. That was pretty cool. That would be a fun world to play in. Indeed. Yeah. It'd be like, it's like Ninja Turtles in space. Okay. Indeed. Yeah. So, so, okay, let's, let's wrap it up. Have we, we dissected this one enough? Yeah, but I think we should wrap it up. Uh, your top sci-fi game we, that hasn't been played that you would like to play. Oh, jeez. It's really uh, Top, top sci-fi dead. game that I haven't played. It doesn't actually have to be a system. Okay, well, um, you know, I'm I'm intrigued by uh, you know your your teaser from however long ago it was about playing Transformers. I'm okay, gonna, I'd like to give that a shot. I might have to do that one online because in our group the interest is very low. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I would do it. I would do it. Originally, I was not. I was not plus. All right. So, what about you, Nate? What What do you want to play? Uh, I'm, I just keep. I've been working on one of my campaign set campaign settings, Virium. You You said it <laughs> last week, and I've been thinking about it all week. And so, one of the settings that you can do with that is you can do sci-fi. As okay, you, know, so. fa- you can do fantasy, you can do modern, you can so do you sci-fi. Want, you want to run the thing you created. Yeah, I know it's kind of egoistic, but yeah, that's what I want to do. How about you, Ryan? No, Dave asked a question, and fuck him. He, he asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem, I got this all day long. Yeah. Judge Dredd, dude. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, I think in the one shot group we're talking about uh, running that game, but I, would, I so want to play a, ju- uh, a judge. Okay. All right, so for me, it'd either be like a futuristic supers game could be pretty badass and fun, um, sort of like a you know days of future past. Like there was a cool X Men uh, episode where like it was post apocalyptic and like some of the cool powers. Like I remember there was a guy that could run really fast and he had like metal arms and he could just put his arms out and like run through shit. Like that was really cool. So like either futuristic supers or yeah, you know, in the Star Wars uh, setting because I've never actually played anything Star Wars and that'd be pretty fun. Okay. And I would definitely, I more favor like a Star Wars than a Star Trek, even though I like both. Well, bringing that up, we were it was actually requested that we play the new Star Wars game and do a review on it and run a module or something. I'm like, I would love to say yes to this dude, but um, Time I think, I think the guy's name is Zach. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but he, you know, he asked us to do it. I'm like, dude, we don't play the game, so we can't do a review on it. And, you know, if we did, which we would like to, it's going to be a, a ways in coming. Yeah, so we'd have to get get the game, review the game, learn it, <laughs> yeah, learn yeah. it, you yeah. know, do the review on it, and then play the game. So uh, well, I, I think I've as got, a, as an outsider got, coming in, you know, since we don't we're not familiar with it, I think that would be a good fresh experience. But there's there's time lag. Time, yeah, yeah time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll look into trying to get the stuff and see uh, see if you know somewhere down the line I can I can make that happen. I've got a lot of you know, yeah. Yeah, my there. understanding with the Star Wars thing is you can't actually play a Jedi yet, like. Like the the first, it's like they they they're like releasing it in sections, mm-hmm. and that section is kind of like a big another big RPG publisher that might be on the table. Maybe. <laughs> well, I, mean, Maybe. I think I think a, a Star Wars game that doesn't incorporate Jedi, you know, similar to as you know you pointed out earlier, all Jedi or no Jedi. I think it's a lot a lot more fun and interesting to play Star Wars without Jedi because you don't have that that power dynamic to to worry about. And not only that, right? If you got Jedi in there. What are they going to want to do? They're going to want to fight with lightsabers. Yeah. So yeah. in order to fight with lightsabers, you need set. Right. And it's just like so. Uh, so there's enough. There's enough compelling information in the Star Wars universe, and you know plot hooks and stories that you can do. That you don't need Jedi as players. You don't need Sith as bad guys. It's so open and so so usable. I think it's very easy to just be like, you know what, for for this game, whoosh, strike it. Nice. Well, we had quite a list of things he wanted to just check out. So I mean. It was all along the same vein. Yeah. Well, no, it was, I think it was like Jedi stuff, it was so. it was the sequence of, of the modules. Yeah, that's what I mean. That, those are all, so, if those are all well, like no Jedi. Then that's a lot of material. Did, right did there. you guys handle this for the next three years? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, well, a module is like a, a, a full arc of something could take like you know like year year and a half to like run through all the material or whatever. I mean, well, it depends how often. You're well, I'm, I'm with I'm, the pace I'm, we go. I'm signing up for you know I'll run a one shot on a system so that I'll learn it. I'll you know I'm, I'll make it happen. 
Uh, it's not going to be for a while because I've got other stuff, you know, in the works. Yeah. You guys heard it here first. No argue exclusive. Ted yeah. is running Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, committed to it. So, so I, I think we'd be a little remiss in talking about sci-fi and not mentioning a little bit about Shadowrun and also like cybernetic enhancements. Oh uh, yeah, you played Shadowrun. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I played guys, Shadowrun. I've never I gotten have. around to it. I think the world's really cool. I know. I've never. Cyborg heard. orcs, man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, and trolls. I mean, but they're a street elf that stripped out so much of its internals. It was so so much not uh, a humanoid anymore. He was down to like. And we're about to play in a sci-fi game. I guess it's sci-fi. I, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, sci-fi ish. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think so. Yeah. yeah, well, no, I mean, the catalyst for them being mutants is clearly uh, fantastic yeah, so. science. Yeah. Yeah, I'm playing a hippopotamus sumo wrestler. <laughs> uh, I'm playing a ninja squirrel. Uh, so that, so that's Does he talk part. like Foamy from uh, you remember Foamy's rants? <laughs> it will oppress because that would be like he just rants about shit and like freaks out and has a ball. Oh, uh, or, or, or from um, uh, what's the movie? It's a uh, kids movie came out. Um, right, it's got uh, Little Red Riding Hood. It's got the Big Bad Wolf. Hoodwink. Granny. Hoodwink. I've yeah. never watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the squirrels like that all the time, but then you give it caffeine and it goes nuts. Yeah. But anyway, I, mean, I was just saying because Shadowrun is interesting because. It swings between magic and tech, but like they, and fantasy, they, and, and well, yeah, and, and, and there isn't. Well, I mean, but the the magic and tech, like they're they're divergent, like they yeah. adversely affect one another or whatever. But they're both there, um, and even putting sci-fi into your fantasy games, psionics. You know, psionics is like a sci-fi you get, uh, and yeah. it's very it's very Dune. You know, yeah, like, I feel like Dune aspect. Yeah. yeah. So I know we we're gearing up towards taking it out, but I wanted to put a little footnote in there. Um, you're, you're, you're absolutely yeah. correct. The uh, the actual you know robotics and cybernetics, you know mixing with humanoids definitely makes for some cool stuff. Yeah. So uh, do we want to engage our engines and uh, head on out of here? I think so. I, I think, think so. we've covered it. All right. Well, make it so. So like, comment, subscribe, and even share. Check us out on Facebook uh, or nerdarchy.com. Or you can check us out on the subreddit nerdarchy. Yeah, stay nerdy. So until right. next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.